This is Dr. T. Varlakshmi discussing you about the double entry bookkeeping methods and the journal entries as a part of business economics and financial analysis. Double entry mechanism that is every transaction that is taking into the accounting is mentioning as a part of uh, two elements that is one comes in position what coming into the organization and what is goes out from the organization that is two way of one trans two way of recording one transaction is called as the double entry mechanism so to have that one we should know what is a single entry mechanism so in a house a person is there if he is uh, uh, earning uh, one uh, 50000 rupees for his family then it will be credit plus and if he has to spend 10000 rupees on the rent the remaining balance is 40000 and and somehow he has received the interest from the banks from the previous investments of 5000 then uh, that will be credits that is 45000 and for the fees of his children he has spent 15000 rupees then it will be minus that is the 30000 balance is there so this is called as the single entry mechanism which is most appropriate for the household persons but not for the for, uh, for the organizations because the organizations per day n number of transactions it will take uh, uh, per month, uh, many books of the elements it will come. If they, if it wants to know what are all their expenditures separately, again they have to see what are all the minus elements. Everything the un, uh, uh, separately they have to do that one. Instead of that one, while writing itself, if they have written in a separate manner, in a separate manner. For example, so if it is added credit side, debit side, so fifty thousands which is in the form of salary and uh, in the form of the rent it is 10,000 so whereas the remaining 40,000 is in the form of cash uh, or a cash at bank or the cash at hand so like this if two elements if they take into the consideration then it is easy for them to identify that uh, expenditures and addings that method is called as the double entry mechanism the advantages for this double entry mechanism is it is a drawing a trial balance out of this ledger accounts and it is very easy for them and more accurate and reliable positions is provided by using this double entry mechanism and it facilitates the comparison of the business performances easily. So that is about the uh, advantages and the disadvantages too are all there it requires a number of more number of the books and records and uh, wrong picture may depicts that may not be identifies with this double entry mechanism all these some limitations are all there and both most advantages are all there with this double entry mechanism if we see this uh, double entry mechanism uh, double entry system it is go mainly based on the credit and a debit mechanism the amount received by the organization and the amount spent by the organization and the same values should be equal at the debit and credit mechanism that is the rule of this double entry mechanism for example some of the examples if we see assets are all there so while assets are all coming to the organization so if the assets are all in Increased, which means the cash is going out that will be debits uh, uh, they are all uh, uh, if that uh, assets are all uh, reducing if they have sold that one so decrease then it will be called as the credit to the organization and the revenue is going to be decreasing so the income is reducing means debit and income is increasing to the organization if it's, it is credit so same way so based on that one they have to see if the liability is going to be decreasing debit if the liability is going to be increasing which means coming to the organization money is coming to the organization that is under the credit if the expenses are all increasing increasing means uh, coming going out of the organization am amount that is debit and expenses are all decreasing means the credit amount is going to be uh, increasing so that is the uh, assumptions or the methods and that is bookkeeping methodology 
So if you see this uh, differences between this single entry mechanism and the double entry mechanism, it is uh, single double entry mechanism is complete system of the accounting in two ways. But in the single entry mechanism, it is an incompletion way. So uh, just like that, they are all writing that uh, transactions. Then it records the both the aspects of the transactions like that is debit and credit. Whereas a single entry mechanism, it records the double aspects for some transactions only, not all the transactions taken into the consideration. And accurate trial balance can be easily prepared with the double entry mechanism. With a single entry mechanism, it is not possible for that one. And since the trial balance is accurate, income and expenditures of that statements, that is uh, uh, that is like profit and loss account. These are all are included under double entry mechanism. Where on a single entry mechanism, it is not possible to uh, get that accurate information. Generally, all the organizations, as per the GAAP rules, generally accepted accounting principles. All the organizations if you follow the <coughs> uh, uh, double entry mechanism or only single entry mechanism is not approved by that organization. So that's why the first method under the double entry mechanism is journal. So journal means a day-to-day -day book which has to maintain by the business uh, uh, organizations in a chronological order. It means in a systematic order they, order, they have to maintain this journal. So that process of recording the transactions of the business is called as the journal. Okay, we must know what is the transaction. For example, purchase the goods is the one transaction. In this one, goods are coming, cash is going out from the organization. That division is called as the journal entries. For these divisions and the recognition of accounts in these transactions, we should know the types of these accounts and the pro forma of the journal that we'll see in this one. If we see this journal format, so here, year, and month they have to mention. So year is 2021, let us say. So what is that month? That transactions occurred month, not uh, that uh, journal writing month. So anyhow, journal means day to day they have to write means uh, uh, what which month it is. Uh, let us say it is um, May. So May 18th. May 18th. What is that uh, day is uh, here it is 18th and may they have to mention and the transactions details accounting name here it is debtor two they have to write and accounting name that is first debit uh, they have to categorize in the transactions what is debiting what is crediting and the debiting will be right under the first and credit amount has to write in the second column definitely they have to write that one and uh, uh, the amount which is at debit should be equivalent to the amount which is at credit and the description that is narration of that transaction they have to mention here. So best example is purchased goods for 20,000. So here goods are all purchased. So we can say goods account or purchases account. And for what? In what way uh, going what going out from the organization? Cash is going out from the organization. So here, what debit what comes into the organization and credit what goes out from the organization. So let us that is a rule there. That rules are also will have the discussion in the same thing. But you are better understanding. Earlier I am telling that one. So debit the purchases and credit the cash. So now we have to write purchases account debt are two cash account. So like this they have we have to write and being the goods were purchased has to write in single uh, single line about this journal entries. And here uh, general ledger uh, reference number means for the books maintaining they have some books numbers that page numbers. So that uh, uh, where this journal is, uh, uh, is posted in the ledger that books uh, reference number they will write here. That is the journal ledger reference number and this is a format of this journal. So uh, to identify that accounts in this any transactions we should have the knowledge on the types of the accounts. So for the easy purpose of that one these accounts were categorized into three so for generally two only personal account and non-personal account. This real account and nominal account will be a part of this 
non personal account okay if any person is involved in the transactions that transactions will be called as personal account that is all the parties involved in that one so here the, uh, for example the goods were purchased to, to ravi so ravi uh, uh, if they have paid the cash no need of uh, remembering the ravi but the goods were purchased from ravi on credit means we have to remember the ravi uh because he is a person and they have to repay to that the ravi so that ravi account they take into the considerations that is called as a personal account or the computers were purchased from uh any of the xyz company limited that xyz company cash if they have paid no need of remembering that institution if they have paid or purchased on credit basis or only or if they have sold on credit basis to any organization that organization has to take into consideration and uh, the person's representatives that is the capital is investing by the owner but it is termed as the capital or the prepaid expenditures the drawings etc will be comes under this personal accounts and the real account which means which we can touch that is the uh, uh, plant machinery ca cash good these are all the realistically they can touch that related elements are all there that will be called as the real accounts nominal expenditure intangible elements like incomes and expenditures uh, let us say the salary salaries is a term existing in the organization for their expenditures that can be considered under the nominal account So for that, all these things, the rules are all there for the personal account. Debit the receiver and the credit the giver. Whereas it is a real account, debit what comes into the organization and credit what goes out from the organization. And nominal account, debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. So why the debit the receiver means? Uh, uh, instantly the organization is uh, paying to the person. The person is receiving the benefits. so organization amount is subtracting that's why debit the person is given to the organization means the organization something is adding that's why credit to the giver so debit what comes into the organization if something is coming to the organization means something subtracted from the organization so that's why it will be debited and the uh, credit what goes out from the organization means something uh, an uh, an asset is going out from the organization means something benefited added to the organization's liquidity position so that's why credit what goes out from the organization debit all expenses and the losses credit all incomes and gains is the rules that we must know to prepare this journal entries individual wise if we see this personal account personal account includes natural persons account artificial persons account and persons representativeness account natural persons means the living persons like mike owner selima uh, ravi raju ranga etc and artificial persons means the legal entities or the for the business purposes which they have established xyz company ibm limited microsoft or any organizations name if it is taken into the consideration then that will be called as artificial persons account and the persons representative account means they are all not in the name of the person but its name will be another thing that is the capital outstanding expenses capital drawings by the owner for his personal use is has to consider under this capital expenditure so that's about the personal account here the rule is debit the receiver and credit the giver and the real accounts means uh, it deals with the accounts uh, relating to the properties and the assets like a uh, buildings machinery furniture equipment vehicles etc that uh, has to taken into consideration and intangible elements like patent rights designing rights trademarks brand values human intelligences also has to take into the consideration as a real account and nominal accounts means these are all the expenses and the losses incomes and gains which they can uh, occurs as a situational basis then they will be considered under the nominal account expenses and losses so that's about the types of the accounts journal entries and double entry mechanism of bookkeeping method thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates